Good morning, good morning. Back at 10 a.m. this morning. I'm Karen Frankel. Welcome to my live broadcasts. All about getting you drawing, getting you excited about drawing. It's one of my absolute passions. I enjoy that. I enjoy teaching and sharing this stuff and getting you excited just as much as I do doing it for myself. So welcome on board. Let's get started. So last week, we were, I was showing you some watercolor pencil techniques. And this week, I'm going to continue on the theme. And I have my trusty um, six watercolor pencils that I spoke about last week. Um, so that's my split primaries, shall we say. And I'm going to show you how I use these to do some pen and wash um, color, perfect for taking overseas. Uh, I thought I had my little bag um, to show you. I've got a lovely little pencil case that I take with me and it holds my knife and things like that. Don't forget, if you're taking a knife, put it in your luggage, not your onboard stuff. Otherwise, they'll throw it away, actually. So let's get started. I've got some pictures up here. This uh, photograph was taken. Uh, it's called Buckingham Gate, I think. Um, and that was one of the, the pictures that I showed after last week's um, live video. So that was a, a sketch that I did of that area um, with pencil and wash. I thought we'd do something a bit local. That is Cottesloe. Uh, for those of you who are watching from overseas or not in Perth, it's one of our favorite beaches. That building is a bit of an icon. I will put the actual photograph in the images below, I know they're not that easy to see. Um, and I discovered something interesting that Facebook posts all of our live videos at 360p. Not quite sure what the P means, but it means that the video is a bit pixelated, even if I film it in a, a higher resolution. So um, I hope you still enjoy them. Okay, so I am going to draw that one. Um, to start, I'll bring that a bit closer so that you can see the actual building and the beach and the, the figures. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the, of the building, Indiana Tea House. Uh, it's had a bit of a reputation, both good and not so good over the years. Um, and I, I think they're thinking about knocking it down and replacing it with something else, but for our purposes, we've got it in the photograph. We don't have to worry about that. Now, the pen that I'm using today is um, <clears throat> it's a Uniball pen. That's the brand. But it is actually a rollerball. So because I'm working vertical and my pen is going to be at different angles, um, it's easier for me to, to use that pen. I could use... Um, there's lots of other graphic pens. Make sure you've got a waterproof pen if you want to put washers on top of them. So this pen, because it's got, I don't know if you can see, I'll hold that right. There you go. Because it's got that metal piece, it has to be completely vertical to use. And so this one has got um, a lot more um, possibility to move around. The only disadvantage of it is that it runs out of ink more quickly than the others. It's beautiful to use. It flows really well. The paper I'm using, once again, is that thick um, cartridge. If you are traveling overseas, I highly suggest that you get a sketchbook that is made for water media. So you can see that's got thicker pages, so it takes the medium. That was done just with watercolor pencils. So don't just take your thin cartridge paper sketchbook. It won't take um, the punishment of all this wet very well. And these are quite readily available. This brand has got this thick um, brown cover on it. I think it's called Strathmore. And they come in a variety of different things for mixed media, for watercolor, smooth, rough, all that sort of thing. So have a look for those. And they do come in A4 as well. 
Now, you might think, why have I got such a big piece of paper? That's because I'm going to do a small sketch. I'm not going to fill that whole page. Um, bear in mind, when you are traveling, you often don't have a lot of time. So unlike those um, beautiful, beautiful um, sketches that I found from my dad, he would have spent quite a lot of time sitting where he was to get as much detail as he did. And I was fascinated, I am fascinated, by using textures. We used to call them Cokies. That was the brand name in South Africa. And um, see if you can play with that. So if you're not on my email list, the email people got those um, images. I will post one of them below so that you can have a gander at what my dad used to do in the 70s. Okay, so I'm not going to take half an hour to do this. I'm just going to do a very quick sketch to give you the gist of how to go about it. And it, it is helpful because if you haven't done this sort of thing before, it can be a bit overwhelming. So do it simply. So I'm putting a, a border on my page and I'm looking at more or less where the horizon is, chucking a horizon in, generally putting in more or less where things are just to start. That's quite a complicated building. I'm not going to wonder, um, worry about it being so complicated. First of all, I'm not situated standing right in front, otherwise you'd see the back of my head. So excuse my drawing abilities, but this is a demonstration. So I've got a, a main turret like that, and that goes off into the trees and it kind of does that. I guess you want it to look fairly iconic of the place that you're trying to draw. So that sort of thing, I can already see that I've missed out that balcony. So I might just chuck it in. So you see, it doesn't really matter if you draw over. Um, I might just chuck it in and put a higher So most people would be able to look at that and go, oh yeah, that, that resembles um, Cottesloe, Indiana Tea House. I like these steps going across there. And there's some smaller trees at the back there. Okay, those steps don't go right across. So I'm using some mark making techniques, which you might have seen in a previous video. This is what your pen is all about. Also, you need to put in your darks. So I'm looking where does the water end relative to the uh, building, and it ends right over here. So I'm going to sweep right the way across like that. And um, sorry, what was I saying? You've got to put in all your darks with your pen. Don't rely on your washers to put in darks. They are just for color. Yes, you can add some darks in, but your pen is your best friend to add your darks in. You can come back later when your, water, when your watercolor wash is dry and add your pen marks then as well, if you don't think you've gone dark enough. Okay, so be careful when you put people in that you don't make them too big. So we just want to suggest them, and you can see that person there for example, is about half the size of the, you know, and that, that's just the demonstration of a demonstration of a, of a person that's in there. I wish I could zoom this camera in. I have actually bought a different camera and I was trying to set it up for today so that I could zoom in with no luck. So hopefully I'll, I'll have it for you next week. So that person over there. These people over there are just specs. So, you know, you're just putting in suggestions of people there. You're not drawing arms and legs. They are just dots on the, on the beach. Uh, this guy is probably the biggest person. He's got his swimming trunks and his long leg like that. And that's pretty much all you need. Um, there's some nice long shadows coming off, which I quite like. 
Uh, what else do I need to do? Those trees are actually coming out of the back here. So I'm just suggesting my construction lines in. Um, for now, probably putting those people in was a bit too early. Um, there's actually a, a roadway there that does that sort of thing. So I missed that earlier, um, just popping it in now. I'm not worried about the extra lines at this stage. Um, so now for my darks. So the trees are main darks and they go right off the edge. You can put the character of those trees in as your darks if you wish. They are called Norfolk Pines. And when you go and fish and chips on Cottesloe Beach at about five o'clock, six o'clock in the evening, the rainbow lorikeets come out and they scream and chatter at each other and you can hardly hear yourself think. Now, as I'm looking at where's the bottom of those trees relative to the building that I've drawn, and they're actually lower, so I'm just gonna chuck them lower. Remember that holiday mm -hmm. sketching is about capturing uh, a feel, capturing where you've been so that when you get back home, you um, you can look at your sketch and you can go, yep, I remember being there. I remember having my fish and chips there. So I'm going to put some shadow, shadow in these arches and hopefully you will see. Now, I'm not worrying. There's all sorts of tiny detail in there. You can't see it. So it's probably good that you can't see it because what you can see there is pretty much what I want to emphasize here. There's a big arch there. There's some dark across there, which shows that there's a balcony. And you can see the pattern of darks and lights starting to happen. I might put some mid-tone um, across there to indicate that grass. So this isn't quite as dark as before. And we've got some luscious trees. Here too, I'm not paying too much attention to the quality of the tree. I am rushing a bit, um, I must admit. I don't want to um, take too much time for the demonstration. I would probably take, in fact, I would definitely take a bit longer if I am doing this sitting there. Uh, now I'm getting too bitty and not characterful at all. So that's when I make the difference between just putting stuff in, which doesn't look good to look like the tree, and actually bothering to put some marks that at least look similar. And it goes right off the edge. I like the way that shapes go off the edge, and they all connect with each other. Now, there's a little, don't know what that is, a little building there. You can choose to leave it out. I think I might. I think it might have been there for sculptures by the sea or something like that. Although there are no sculptures on the beach, so that's probably wrong. Okay, I can't really see what that looks like properly. Because I'm on the side there. So... That's pretty much um, drawing that in. There's not too much to do for your water. You just want maybe a, a suggestion of water. You might want a suggestion of some people in the water there. Again, they're just little shapes like that with heads on the top. That one's probably too big. Um, that's pretty much all we need to do, certainly for the demonstration. Okay. So you've put your main darks in. I've taken 15 minutes, probably 10 minutes um, to do that after I stop talking. Now I've got my trusty um, pencils to use. Um, <clears throat> one of my favorite ways to use it, um, I did mention this last week, is to take the color directly off the pencils it doesn't work terribly well if you want to mix colors, but you can overlay colors on your paper. So if I wanted to make that deep green, 
I will take my reddish blue. Now, Australian greens have got a lot of red in, which is why I'm taking a reddish blue, and I'm taking my orangey yellow. Not quite sure what that's going to turn out like. That's not bad. It's probably a bit blue, so I'm going to grab some more yellow and I'm going to drip, squeeze my water brush onto there to grab some more colour. Now, the most important part in my view of adding colour is not to paint by numbers. So you don't have to keep in the lines, you don't have to um, you know, paint by numbers. You also don't have to put colour everywhere. So I'm enjoying putting colour. Um, it's not particularly dark at the moment. Remember me saying that um, most of the dark comes from the pen. I can see what it looks like to you and I think it's um, looking not too bad. Again, that's a bit blue. Obviously, I'm not getting a lot of yellow on my brush. Now, if you have a small pan of a small box of travel watercolours, that's going to help you out a lot more. Well, not necessarily a lot more because this actually allows you to draw with them as well. And I will give you an example of that before we finish today. So what I'm ending up with is darks that are surrounding my building here. Um, so that the building starts to stick out a bit. Now, that blue water, let's put some colour in there. It's a bit green because I've got blue on my, on my brush. Let me just show you my quick trick. Remind you, I just drip it into my hand and kind of rub it away. So um, hopefully this should be a bit more blue. But our oceans are a bit greeny, so I'm not really fussed about that. I'm going to drip some water onto there. Okay, not looking too, too bad. Um, I think I might put some grass in there. So I've used my different blue to make my green. I'm not mad about not having colour in there at the moment, but let's see what we can do about that. Um, it, it doesn't really have a colour. It's a, it's a, it's a beigey, creamy colour. I'm trying to find something that suggests that roof. It is always a good idea to have a spare page or on the side to just test your colours. So that's not the colour that I want. Ooh, I'm not sure how I'm going to get that. Let's have a look. Let's make it a bit more grey. No, that's not going to work. Does it really matter? Um, that grey is probably what I need. So you do have to give yourself a little bit of a license to change the colours. If that's all you're working with, there are some extras that I like to use, which I will show you. Now, actually, um, this is a set. When I, when I travel, I do have some extras. Um, for example, that turquoise is really difficult to make. Purple, as you may have noticed, is quite difficult to make. And my favourite is indigo, because I often use indigo to actually draw with. And then I don't know what I'm drawing here let's say trees in the back, house, that sort of thing. I often use indigo just on its own. And then I smudge out um, what I need with the water pen. So I always take my indigo and having said, use the, whoops, didn't want to add any strokes to that. And I found myself coloring in there. So this is really nice or getting those real dark. So I've kind of put a tree over where the building was. So I'm changing it up, not paying that much attention as I, 
as I mentioned before. So uh, please forgive me for that. Um, this is just giving you um, a basic idea. I do want to add a little bit more interest in terms of um, maybe adding some spots of colour and the people are really good for doing that. Um, sitting on the beach. Um, there's actually a car there, which would have been nice, but let's, let's put something there just to add a bit of interest. Um, I'm still not madly happy about that building being white paper, so I'm going to actually just get some dirty water. I don't even know if you can see that it's changed, but I am happier that that dirty water is there. One last thing is, if you want to put the blue sky on, I've just noticed I haven't put any, any beach on either. My favorite way to do that is to make a swatch of color. This is, I showed you this last week. It is very helpful to wet the whole sky first. Now remember, you will not be working vertically like I am. The reason you wet, wet the whole sky is so that when you put this color on, it doesn't stay in streaks. Remember I said that watercolor pencils do not wash in the same way as watercolors do. So if you didn't have wet paper, each line would dry and you'd be able to see the lines. But as you may have noticed in my dad's um, sketches, he didn't care about lines in the sky and all of that sort of thing. And I really love that attitude of not getting too precious about it. Let's just add some color in um, onto that sand. So I am still using all my basic colors, except for that indigo. I haven't actually changed. So I'm putting a, um, an orangey, and I'm gonna make it a bit watery. It's pretty bright orange in my hand there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's okay. And I actually don't mind the streakiness of that because the sand is, um, is a bit streaky. Not, again, not perfect colors, but it is a suggestion. It's a pen and wash. So there's my little pen and wash of Cottesloe. And I hope you've got something out of this. Um, and yeah, that took me about ooh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes maybe all up. So you can see that when you're coloring something, it does take longer than just drawing with your pen. Um, but fabulous. You don't have to draw whole pictures like that. That would fit on, on my, um, so that's about an A5 size. You can draw smaller within there, um, make a smaller work. Um, here's um, a work on bigger, actually. I just wanted to show you that, um, I said I was going to show you that you can draw directly with your um, watercolor pencils. So there's no pen work in here. There's no pencil work. I've drawn with my watercolors and my watercolor pencils, so you can see the strokes, and then I've washed some of them. So this was when I was in Cossack a couple of years ago. I will put that picture down below for you to have a look at. And uh, all that's left for me to say is sign up to my email address. It's easy. Go to karenfrankel.com and click on Get Drawing. You'll get some little extras. Um, I'm very excited to that today because my Get Drawing book is going out to the testers. My precious little baby will be seen for the first time. Um, and so hopefully I get some resounding yes from my testers. So I'm on track for that book to come out at, in October this year. So get on my email list. And um, I'll see you next week. Get Drawing. Bye.